What is going on? Today I'm at Honda Cars of Rockland. I've got the 2020 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport. And there's some new things with the Sport, the Sport Touring, and all of these 2020 hatchbacks that I can't wait to show you coming right up. Now before we get started taking a look at all these exterior details and some of the new stuff like right here up on the front, I want to give a big thank you and shout out to Honda Cars of Rockwall. They were super generous to give me this Civic to show you guys today. Uh, please be sure to check them out if you're in the DFW area. So taking a look at the 2020 Honda Civic hatchback, we have the LX Sport, which we have here, EX, EXL, and Sport Touring at the top. For the headlights, you're going to get projector halogen bulbs on every single model except the very top touring model which gets LED headlights. We'll get fog lights on the sport model and now which are also halogen. And new for this year for the uh, sport touring is an improved beam for wider and longer light beams plus our headlights also get a blackout treatment now. Also new is the revised styling of the lower bumper, the fog light housing, updated wing on the front for their wing grill crossbar, and this color right here is a platinum white. Let me know what you think and I apologize in advance because this car just got rained on and it was not the car that I was intentionally going to grab. So I apologize for the dirty paint, but this car looks nice, especially with the black accents. We will get anywhere from 16 to 18 inch wheels. The sport models will get a new style of 18 inch wheels this year with 235 40 series tires. The mirrors are body colored and they'll be heated on the EX model and up. LED turn signals on the Touring model, and then body color door handles on the rest. The Sport and Touring model are going to get an underbody spoiler kit that you will see all around the vehicle. The black trim running around, it really looks nice on this car. And we get an independent rear suspension, and we'll talk about the drive a little later. Out back, you get a couple of spoilers with the rear roofline spoiler. You've got LED brake lights. You've got some more black plastic grills that are a little bit different than the smooth in the front. And the Sport Touring model will get this center dual outlet exhaust. As far as the driver assist features, Honda Sensing is standard for every single 2020 Honda Civic hatchback. And there's different names for each brand, but we get forward collision warning with automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning with lane keep assist, adaptive cruise with low speed follow, automatic high beams, and then the EX is going to give you Honda Lane Watch instead of uh, blind spot monitoring and then the top sport touring is going to give you rain sensing windshield wipers now let's take a look under the hood or under the uh the hatch right here so got a little touch pad under there where you can take a look at things and so behind the second row you'll get about 25 cubic feet which is actually pretty darn nice and i'll fold the seats down in a second i want to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like with some actual cargo in here and i apologize for the lighting so that's a carry-on suitcase you've got a hook right there on the inside and you've got a spot for a tonneau cover or a cargo cover that you can pull across right there. And there's another one that we have that's in the back seat that can go over on the glass. So this whole area can be covered, which is nice. There's an, uh, a cargo light right up under there. And let me go ahead and fold these down. You have to actually reach through or go to the back seat in order to do it. But still, can't really expect anything different. And once you get that down, you get about 46 cubic feet. So it folds nice and flat as well. Overall, a really nice cargo area, pretty big, pretty spacious, especially for the way that this car looks and the actual dimension. So Honda did a great job with that. And underneath of here, there is a compact spare tire on every trim. All right, so we have hopped in the front seat of this 2020 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport. And I'm gonna tell you what each trim level gets in terms of these front seats and then tell you how comfortable they are. So the bottom true, the LX, and the sport model that we have right here are going to give us these cloth manual adjustment seats with height adjustability as well. The EX trim and up is going to give you eight-way power seats that are heated. And then the EXL and touring model are going to give you uh, leather seats. There's no ventilated seats or memory settings in here, but you get the heat and leather on those trims. The passenger seat is four-way manual on every trim except the top trim is going to give you four-way power. Now talking about these cloth seats in this sport model of the hatchback, I've been pretty comfortable in my short time in here. They're not super firm like some of the new uh, cloth seats are. And at five foot nine, of course, I don't have any trouble sitting in here with headroom. I can even lower the seat uh, a little bit more with this adjustment here. There's just no lumbar support. I don't care if it's manual like this, but I'd like to see a little dial for lumbar support or something. But overall, these seats are still fairly comfortable. I don't think I would have any trouble sitting in here for a while. 
Every model except the base model is gonna give us this leather steering wheel. The adjustment is way down there, which is kind of weird, but it's tilt and telescoping on all of these trims as well. Now we have hopped inside of this 2020 Honda Civic Sport hatchback, and here's the key fob. We actually get the smart key system on the Sport model now. You didn't used to get it, it used to be the EX. We also get remote start, push button start, and you can walk away and it will automatically lock if you want it to. So let's go ahead and start it up, foot on the brake, and there we go. So there are some updates to the interior here, like I said. It's kind of, it's just a refresh. There's updated dash trim variations on different models. The EXL and top touring model will get a brushed black treatment. And uh, you can see what we have here in this sport now, model. Now over on the door, right up top, we get a semi-soft material. It's not a hard touch plastic, but you do get some hard plastic right here. Kind of have a nice little trim piece right there and it fits well with the, the style of this door handle. You got a somewhat soft padded armrest, a little slot right here. And my bottle, my big bottle does fit right there and you've also got a slot down here. And just the first two, uh, the front two windows are automatic up and down. Right on the inside, we've got a couple of our safety features, the lane keep, or the lane departure and the, uh, the forward collision and your traction control. Shut the door, pretty good door slam. So give you a quick look at this interior here. We've got a nice soft steering wheel with a couple sport grips if you have the sport models with the CVT, you even get uh, paddle shifters if you want. So kind of just, you know, simulated gear shifts. You've got some steering wheel buttons. And unlike some of the older Hondas that had the, a similar setup, these have like a clear coat over them, like a clear plastic. So this, the paint shouldn't wear off like some of the old ones. And I had one that actually did that too. And now you've got your uh, radar cruise control settings over here, right there for your distance and your lane keeping. So that's pretty cool. So right up in front of us, we've got a gauge on the left for the temperature, a gauge on the right for the fuel, and then right in the middle, we've got this information display. The information display has quite a bit of information. So you've got your trip computer, uh, which you can cycle through that. And then you've even got a turbo gauge right here, kind of a, a, a turbo boost measurement. Um, and then pretty typical from what you'll see on some other models. And this is a tachometer and speedometer in one right here. You can see your audio, any phone, uh, and then you can cycle back and forth miles per hour kilometer. So uh, pretty nice, large, useful information display. Another thing that the sport models give you, the sport and the sport touring are these metal pedals. These are sport pedals. So different than what you'll get on the other trims, you'll just get regular pedals. And of course we're missing our third pedal over here. So <laughs> you don't get anything. Now some of the, one of the biggest changes is right here. So before this LX and the Sport would give you the small five inch screen that's not a touch screen. Well now this Sport model and up give us the seven inch screen which used to be the EX and up. So the base model will get a four speaker 160 watt system but now we get a 180 eight, eight speaker system. So that is pretty cool. Uh, the EX trim level is going to add Sirius XM, HD radio, and an extra charging port. And the top touring model uh, is going to give you the best speaker system, 540 watts and 12 speakers. But I've showed you guys this screen before on some other, mod on some other uh, Hondas. Uh, it's not the most responsive, but it's not a bad screen. It can really do everything that you need it to. Uh, I like how we still have physical buttons. We even have a volume knob now for uh, before when we didn't have a volume knob with Honda. Uh, so that is nice. Honda Link is pretty cool if you uh, go through that and take a look at that. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff that you can edit and change in here as well, which is nice. And right below that, we have a single zone climate control. So it is automatic. It's not like you control uh, complete manual control, but you can control your fan speed over there and the rest of your information on here. Dual zone will be on the EX and up. So if you wanted dual zone, you'd have to step up one notch. One thing I really love with these Hondas is the storage area. So you can see we've got a storage bin right there. You've got a little a couple spots where you can feed some cables. And then right below that, we have a USB port and a 12 volt power outlet and some extra storage space. So out of the way, kind of concealed, a uh, nice little area from Honda. And let me show you the backup camera. Honda's always done good with giving you a pretty good backup camera, decent clarity, you have dynamic lines. You've even got three different views for a wide, regular, and a narrow looking down. So that's pretty cool backing up to something. 
Honda gives us a brake hold button and electronic parking brake. The shifter is also leather wrapped. Eco button over here. And then my large bottle fits in these cup holders just fine as well. You can even remove this cup holder thing. You can move this armrest forward. It's not necessarily like super padded, but it's got some a decent little cushion to it and it actually feels pretty nice. And then go ahead and lift this up. It is kind of deep. You've got an extra little nook right there and we can scoot that back and reveal an extra charging port. The glove box is just your typical glove box. It doesn't lock and it's not softly damped. You can get an automatic dimming rear view mirror on the EXL and garage control, EXL and up in garage controls. And then as far as a moonroof goes, we've just got this dark headliner. You can get a moonroof on the EX and up. One more thing is you won't have uh, illuminated vanity lights on these two lower trims. You'll get them on the rest and the entire visor will slide out. And since this is a hatchback, let me go ahead and give you a look at some of the visibility here. So looking back, You've got a pretty large pillar back there. That second window is not too bad. It's not too bad looking out that back window, but that spoiler actually does kind of get in the way a little bit, but still not too bad. Now the back seat of the Honda Civic Sport hatchback is pretty simple. We don't really have any amenities back here. We don't even have a center folding armrest. You have to go up to the EX trim to get that, and then you'll get cup holders. There's no AC vents right here. There's uh, no USB or 12 volt power outlets, uh, which would be nice to at least have one of those. But what it has going for it is space. So when I'm sitting up tall, even with this sloping roof and the hatchback type style here, I can sit up tall without any problems. If I kind of lean back a little bit, my hair is going to touch, but otherwise my head doesn't touch. And I have this seat as far back as it can go. And I still have a little bit of space in front of my knee. So that's really great. There is a floor hump in the middle. So sitting someone in the middle of here might be a little problematic, but you can still have your foot on each side and be okay. And then when I sit behind myself driving, I've got a lot of knee space. So Honda did a nice job of making this a very spacious back seat, especially for this class. Now under the hood of the 2020 Honda Civic Sport hatchback and all of the Civic hatchbacks, nothing has really changed except one thing on the transmission side with the Sport Touring model you're gonna wanna find out. There's only one powertrain option for the hatchbacks, unlike the sedans. You can get a two liter naturally aspirated engine on the sedans, but only this 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine here. And on the non-sport models, you'll get 174 horsepower, 162 pound feet of torque that comes out at 1700 RPMs. But on these sport models like this one, you can get 180 horsepower and 162 to 177 pound feet of torque. That 177 pound-feet of torque, the bump and torque, comes only with the manual transmission. And now you can get the Sport Touring model with a manual. It used to be only this Sport model with a manual, but premium fuel is recommended for those models. The six-speed manual is only available on the Sport and Sport Touring. You can't get it on any other trims. Otherwise, standard is going to be the CVT transmission that we have in this model right here. Miles per gallon is going to vary quite a bit with the best on the non-sport model being 31 in the city, 40 on the highway, 34 combined. The sport models with the six-speed transmission will give you 29 in the city, 37 on the highway, and 32 combined. Otherwise, with the CVT, you actually lose a little bit, 29 in the city and 35 on the highway. All right, everyone, thank you so much for sticking around for this test drive of the 2020 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport model again right here. I hope that you got to learn a little bit about some of the other models as well. And I do have a sedan sport model test drive if you want to check that out. And uh, an EXL, I believe, from maybe the year before. So be sure to check those out if you want to see a little bit more. But they have been refreshed recently. So um, one thing about the sport models here is that they're definitely a little bit they're definitely sportier they really are it's not just a name uh, they have the looks they feel a little sportier we actually you know we sit kind of low in all of these Civic hatchbacks and that that's something that maybe some of you with some mobility issues might have trouble with but let's go ahead and have a little bit of fun on a short test drive right here so I'm just in normal mode right now some medium throttle So those of you familiar or not familiar with CVTs, you don't get the traditional stepped gears. You do kind of get a little bit of mimics and we have paddle shifters and a couple downshifts. And it kind of mimicked the uh, 
the actual downshift as well. Now with an acceleration run, it's a just a little laggy off the line. But the Civic's not meant to be a fast car, even though it is fairly quick. And that was not pedal down, floored, or anything like that. I really love the weight of the steering wheel with this Civic. It's very responsive. It's such a nimble car. And you'll get to notice that as soon as you get behind the wheel. They've always kind of got this little bit of a sportier feel, especially compared to some of the older Corollas and some of the kind of more plain Jane type of vehicles. We've got a fully independent suspension, independent rear, so that really helps with the handling. Feels pretty well planted, pretty stable. I don't have any big complaints with the way the Civic drives. It's completely perfect for an everyday sedan and it's got that little bit of sportiness for those of you that crave some of that, especially if you wanna go with the manual transmission. Um, ride comfort is pretty good as well. It certainly can't complain about it. It's not the softest in the class. It's certainly not harsh. Um, one thing that Honda actually added this year was extra insulation in certain areas like the fenders I believe it's under the floor uh, a couple areas for the hatchbacks to help with noise insulation and I think that that kind of helps directly compete with the Mazda 3 considering the Mazda 3 feels fairly premium all right pedal down right here quick you've got that turbo that kicks in right away and you can see the handling it handles pretty well and it's pretty fun to drive I'm gonna put it in sport mode and it automatically kicked up the rpms to about two and a half if I get on it it's very quick and responsive and then getting on the brakes with the truck right here the brakes are responsive as well so everything about this car the handling the acceleration the braking is responsive the acceleration is a little laggy right away and that's typical of CVTs. You don't have an actual fixed gear like you do in the new Corolla. But really the Civic shines in practicality. It's very efficient. The sport models with the CVT actually aren't all that efficient going down to 35 on the highway, but if you wanna get the other models, you can get 40 miles per gallon, which is just great. Once you let go, the nice thing about this CVT is once you actually kind of ease off of the throttle, it doesn't hold you there and really stay wound up like some other CVTs that I've been with. So I don't have any complaints with this CVT. I know a lot of enthusiasts aren't fans of it, but it does what it's supposed to and it gives this car some great efficiency ratings overall. And it's just an easy car to drive. I can't say anything bad. It's just a nice car and it honestly does seem to be quieter than I remember the sedan being so maybe the extra insulation really does seem to help and hopefully Honda North America will be nice enough to let me take a Civic or a Civic hatch for a week loan so I can get some decibel ratings some night shots and some of the extra goodies that I like to put in there I hope you've gotten a decent feel for how the Civic drives if I was gonna compare it to some other models uh, it just feels a little easier to drive it's just it's a little bit more engaging, a little bit more fun, and the sport model just kind of tops that off. So that's a wrap on this 2020 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this car and some of the minor changes that we get on here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.